Okay. Um, okay, let's go ahead and begin. Uh, this is a tutorial over section 6.4, which covers traits, genes, and alleles. Our key concept for this section is that genes encode for proteins that produce a diverse range of traits. So, in order to understand these concepts, uh, we have about nine specific vocabulary uh, terms that you need to learn for this section. Uh, here they are. Um, what you will see throughout the presentation here is um, these blue or er, these purple and yellow um, words showing up again and again. So at the end of this, we should see um, all of these different terms at one point. Let's go ahead and dive right into uh, the main meat of what we need to understand. Um, a lot of talk about what a gene is and how genes work. Um, genes are a specific sequence of nucleotides that encode for a single protein. So let's go ahead and talk about what that looks like. If I was to look at any different cell in a body, um, what I would see is all of these tiny chromosomes inside of a nucleus. Now a chromosome is made up of two separate parts. It's going to have one side that is a chromatid and another side that's a chromatid. It sort of forms an X shape. In the very center of that uh, chromosome, there's going to be a thing that we call a centromere. So here's our centromere. And at the very end, uh, there's going to be a telomere. So uh, what I'd like to do is go ahead and unravel this chromosome um, in a specific region at the end of its telomere. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about this later, but I'll just introduce the term locus right now. A locus is a particular location on a chromosome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in, so to speak, and unravel um, the end of this telomere right here. So um, when I do that, what I can see is a uh, pretty neat thing that happens. Um, my my DNA is actually wrapped around a histone, um, or thousands and millions of histones, and DNA is going to wrap around these histones, and it's going to be all completely bundled up. So, um, what we can see here is a specific um, set of uh, DNA at the very end. And this is going to be actually our gene. So, our gene is going to be found at the very end of the telomere that we were just looking at. So that's our locus. And inside this um, locus, at the very end, we're going to find one gene. Now this gene has its nucleotides, its A's and G's, and C's and T's. Um, and they're going to all be complementary, which means that A and T are all going to pair together. C and G are all going to pair together. Um, and when they are all paired together in these perfect lines. Um, they actually encode for a specific protein. And um, I'm going to call that protein number one. So all of this is going to carry the information to make protein number one. And one of the interesting things, and the thing that really continues to keep life going, is that um, these genes can change over time. So I'm going to go ahead and um, go back and inside this DNA, I'm going to make a little mutation. So I'll make a mutation right here on this base pair, and a little bit further down on this base pair, and maybe we'll just throw in three little mutations. Now, when I do that and I take this gene, um, let's just change the color just to symbolize the fact that we have changed some of the genetic information. Now that can actually encode for a different protein. And I'm going to call that protein number two. So <clears throat> this is a concept of um, different alleles. So protein number one would be one allele, and protein number two is a different one. An allele is one of two or more forms of a gene. So um, the reason that there's two fo forms of genes is really just a difference in the change of nucleotides. Um, it's just different information. Now let's go ahead and try and um, work through the locus real quick. I'm going to talk about um, specific lo uh, 
the locus on uh, chromosome 16 in humans. So if we look at any chromosome, um, we're going to look at a lot of different locuses right here. And a locus is just a particular location on a chromosome. So down at the telomere, there's all these different um, genes that are found down here, wound up in the histones. And in the centromere, there's a couple of different genes. There's less. And then um, at the end of the telomere, um, there's going to be more and more genes. So um, we can actually, when we stain these uh, with colors, that's why they have the name chromosome, um, they get different bandings. So um, the denser the genes are, uh, the brighter the banding will be. Um, so that's kind of a cool thing. Uh, it's always kind of cool to see a chromosome up close and you look at all these different locus uh, loci and you can see all these different uh, locations there. Okay, so one of the cool things about chromosome 16 is that it actually carries a uh, gene that encodes for earwax. So um, I'm going to go ahead and highlight chromosome 16. Um, and there's this region in the middle of chromosome 16 that encodes for earwax. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that loci right there. And uh, let's go ahead and read about what's going on with that. So in 2002, Tomata et al. used eight Japanese families to determine that the gene for wet and dry earwax was on chromosome 16 near the centromere. So that would be its lo lo locus. <laughs> Later, Yoshuri et al. in 2006 found that the gene responsible was ABCC11. So um, if we looked at chromosome 16 right near the centromere, we would find um, we would find this particular locus, and um, one of the interesting things is that if we just change our uh, nucleotide sequence, uh, we can actually end up with a wet allele. So this 16, if I, if I just change its uh, nucleotide sequence, it can make wet earwax, a protein that makes wet earwax, or it's also possible that uh, the protein that's made by this chromosome 16 can make dry earwax. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that would result in if, if we crossed these two um, people. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take that <coughs> wet um, earwax uh, from a male here. So I'm going to have my male and he will pass on his chromosome and it's going to have a gene that encodes for wet earwax. Now I'm going to pass on the female genes from her egg and she's going to pass hers on. In our, uh, we're going to link these two things together just like an oxen's going to link its uh, two heads in here when it's pulling a cart. Uh, we call these a zygote, and we have two different things linked together. So I have these two different genes um, on in this individual, so it's going to be carrying two different genes. Now what do we call it when we cross two individuals? Uh, this is called a monohybrid cross. This is a cross that specifically looks at um, one trait, or it shows one trait. So we are going to do everything, and we are just... Um, singly looking at what happens at this specific site, um, which we call a gene on chromosome 16. So let's get a couple of new terms for, uh, for what's going on here. Uh, for one thing, we'll have a uh, homozygous uh, allele. What homozygous means is that when we have both of the exact same traits. So for this allele, I'm going to have homozygous for dry earwax. So they're going to have two of the same alleles for a trait. So one offspring, not the one that I just showed, um, but it, it would have a mother that passed on dry earwax and a father that passed on dry earwax. 
In the example that we just showed, we had a uh, heterozygous example, um, and that's where one of each allele for a trait is expressed. So we have a dry and a wet. Um, so the father would have passed on the wet, and the mother would have passed on the dry. Okay, alleles can be represented using letters. Uh, one of the questions that commonly gets asked is um, why an organism's genotype may be homozygous dominant, homozygous recessive, or heterozygous, but never heterozygous recessive. So that's kind of a confusing question. So let's <coughs> look at um, what's going on there. A uh, dominant allele is expressed as a phenotype when at least one allele is present. So, uh, actually, if we were to look at uh, if we were to look at our genes, I think I switched them around here. I'll go ahead and see them um, if we were to look at our genes, wet allele would be dominant. So in this case, we have a heterozygote, and since there's one chromosome that's present, or one chromatid that'd be present, um, this is going to express wet. Um, however, its genotype is different, so it's going to be carrying a trait for dry earwax, but it really will just show uh, wet earwax. So the phenotype would be wet. Um, a recessive allele is expressed as a phenotype only when two copies are present. So um, let's go ahead and look at a wet example. So in a wet example, we're going to have a mother that passes on a dry allele and a father that passes on a dry allele. So um, in this example, we'd have a recessive. Um, now, it would be possible that we could have uh, just a switch of scenarios here. So I'm going to show you guys that real quick. And um, we'll get a dominant allele, a dominant dominant allele, so I have two uh, green, excuse me, two wet traits. This would be uh, homozygous for dominant. We have one wet, one wet passed on from each character trait. So um, dominant alleles are always going to be represented by uppercase letters and recessive alleles by lowercase letters. So in this example, I'm going to go ahead and go back and um, change up my um, thing. So I'm going to just type in W for the dominant trait. I'm actually going to switch this out and just write in uh, lowercase w. So big W for um, the dominant trait and a lowercase w for the recessive trait, which is going to be dry or relax. Okay, um, the last thing I want to touch on is uh, the difference between genome, uh, genotype, and phenotype. A genome is going to be all of a organism's genetic material. So that's all the material that's present when um, you're born, it's the material that separates humans from fruit flies, from uh, zebrafish, from uh, tiny nematodes, to chimpanzees. Um, we all have different genomes. Um, so genome is sort of a broad um, concept. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put a big, broad stroke under that. So that's all encompassing. Okay. Um, underneath that, a bit of a smaller uh, thing is actually our uh, specific set of genes. So we call that a genotype. That's just what you have. So you have a specific genotype of human gene, unless you're watching this as a chimpanzee or another crazy creature, I don't know what. Um, so you have a specific set of genes, but not all of those genes are actually shown. Only some of them are shown. So the genes that you show is even a more specific thing, and that's going to be what we call a phenotype. So we're just getting more and more um, specific when we talk about what genotype is it. 
uh, what phenotype is it? And then um, we'll really broad when we talk about what genome we're doing. So thanks for this watching this video tutorial.